hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl jovi okay guys so like i promised earlier this uh picture on your screen that's the um, dress we're going to be cutting and sewing in this video so guys let's just get to it the measurement we need for this dress is on your screen guys the gown length the burst the waist the hip the back half length waist to hip gown length minus half length mid neck to sleeve length that's 20.5 before we continue guys please like and subscribe to my channel thank you guys let's get straight to it just place your fabric on fold like i did mine here okay i used office pin to secure why because the dress was kind of shifting and i wouldn't want it to alter my measurements i'm also cutting off the the edge this edge of this fabric because it's kind of bending i wouldn't want it to also alter my measurement so here i am just using my chalk to mark out the measurement from the neck the midpoint of the neck to where i want the sleeve to reach that is because this gown is a cut together um gown kind of the neck and the shoulder will be cut together that's why it's big like this from the midpoint of your neck to where you want the sleeve to reach so when i measured i got 20 and a half then as you can see here i am taking the tape root to 22 that's because i added extra one and a half inch for the folding of the sleeve you place your tape root and mark out your half length the half length we're working with is 17 and a half after allowances will be getting like 19 inches that is what i am marking out right now then after marking out the half length remember at the waist region it will be pleated it's either you pleat or you gather but just if you look at closer at the picture you will notice that the center it's being gathered or pleated i'm cutting out the half length so if you notice here i marked something at that waist region that is because i slanted the sleeve so that it will go well what do i mean by so that it will go well i slanted it thus the round sleeve measurement is 24 24 divided by 2 you will get 12 so from your shoulder you place your tape through and mark out 12 that's from the sleeve side then the waist region this place now that's my scissors is pointing at i i placed my tape through from the center of the fabric and i got 15 i marked out 15 so from that 15 you mark out line to that 12 that you got while placing your tape rule from your shoulder to your round sleeve. I don't know if you understand, but look closely at the picture. You understand what I'm saying. It's slanted. That's because the sleeve cannot go straight like that. It needs to slant so that it will be fine. Use the front to trace the back. Just the same method. Place your fabric on fold. Then if you notice, I marked out my zip allowance already. I marked out one and a half inches. So after marking it out, you place the front part on top of the back part so that you can use it and trace it out. So that is what I'm cutting now. As you can see, I am kind of taking up that sleeve, um, round sleeve. I'm taking it up because I don't like the first measurement I used. So I wanted the curve to like enter inside very well. That is why I kind of marked it up a bit. Yeah. So for the neck... Here I marked out, or I'm using three by one inches. That's the depth for the back is one inch. Why the wideness is three inches. The front and the back, the wideness will be three inches, but the depth will not be the same. For the back, it is one inch. But for the front, it will be a V neckline and it will be down. After cutting the back, I'm going to cut the front neck. So here I am cutting the back off. I'm cutting it together first then after when i separate it i'll now cut the front neck proper as you are cutting you can now be taking off the office pin that you used to hold down the fabric so it won't shift so for the front neck i cut um eight by three that's the wideness is three inches and the depth is eight but the front neckline is v line is v neckline guys this is the back um this is the down part of the dress please guys pardon me remember i made this video for my tiktok 
uh, process videos i didn't actually do it for this youtube but after posting it on tiktok we were like i should please post the normal video on a youtube channel that is why it, the video is like this okay let's move on this is the uh, down part of the dress i cut out the back part first because the front back of the down part there will be a slight curve on it because if you look at the dress you'll notice that there is a curve in front of it so because of that curve i decided to like cut the back part first then i can use the back part to trace the front i marked out one and a half inches for the zipper that's the zip allowance i actually secured this fabric with office pin so that it won't shift because of the type of fabric i'm using so after marking out your one and a half inches you can mark out two inches depending for your zip allowance you just mark it out with a chalk after that you get your waistline divided by four and mark it with chalk then remember to measure from waist to hip it is very important so the waist to hip we are using here is 11 yeah 11 inches after marking out the waist to hip the next one is the hip to the knee because it's a short gown that's why i'm stopping at the knee our waist measurement here is 33 if you divide it by two you'll be getting 16 and a half if you divide it by four you'll be getting 8.3 inches after marking out your 8.3 inches you mark out one inch for your um that after the one inch for your dart, you can decide to mark out either one inch for your sewing allowance or one and a half, depending. The hip measurement we are working with is 46 and a half. When you divide by two, that's 23.3. Then divided by four is 11.6 inches. You mark it out and add your extra one inch or one and a half inches for your sewing allowance. Okay, guys, this knee side, the knee length side. Uh, we are working with 18. That's from your waist, you measure 18. When you reach that 18... You're going to measure, like place your tape rule uh, with the exact with your exact hip measurement. That's the hip measurement we are using is 46 and a half divided by 4 is 11.6 inches. So this knee side, you just you, you just mark out 11.6 inches. Don't add any other allowance to it. So that it will give you that perfect curve. So at the down part, I added one and a half inch inches for folding. You can decide to add two inches or two and a half inches for your folding. I used one and a half here for the folding. So I'm going to be placing this back part of the dress to the front part. So after marking out with your chalk, you go ahead and cut. Guys, remember our gown length is 39, 39 inches. So you have to minus your half length from your gown length before you can get this particular down part so guys i've placed the back um, down part the back part yes i've placed it on top of the front part so you want to trace out the front part of this dress now still keep your fabric on fold and then you cut out just trace it that is what i'm doing now i'm tracing out the front using the back as you can see i am being careful so i won't make mistake so guys remember the dress the front part Remember that curve in the front part? Yeah, that is what I am marking out here with chalk. I actually used three inches for it. I marked out extra three inches for the up part of the front part of the dress. That is what you are seeing here. After marking out the three inches, you can decide to make yours four inches, depending. But well, I used three inches here, plus um, the joint allowance that's half, half inch, 3.5. So getting to the side, you slant it so that the side will be the same measurement. It's just the middle part of the dress that will be that will be on curve the way you are seeing it on the video. After marking it with your chalk, you cut carefully to avoid a mistake. But make sure the front and the back side that they are exactly the same length. So that when you'll be joining the upper part to the down part, it will be perfect. You can notch your zip allowance so that you won't make mistake when you'll be joining it. So guys, this is the, the wing design. That's the two wings by the side of the down part of the gown. Uh, actually, when I measured, I got for the longer part 30 inches and for the short part 25. So for the 30 inches, you'll be add, remember to add your folding allowance or your hemming allowance. You can see I've kind of shifted it. The one down is the longer one, then the one up is the shorter one. I will just like cut it from that from the way I folded it. And that will be the end of the cutting. Sewing so time. So I'm starting with the wing design, hemming it. Yeah, I'm folding it like just getting it ready to be attached to the down part of the dress after hemming it okay this is the down parts of the dress the back part i am kind of sewing the zipper the zipper allowance i'm sewing it together so that if i am fixing my zip 
it will be perfect here yeah, i'm fixing my dart remember your dart is four inches just keep your tape rule from the zip and measure out four inches you mark then the depth also four inches you mark then why so many it's just so it slantly so that you will get a perfect and a fine dart is this is the the upper part of the dress the neck region for the back part i am kind of folding it in you can use bias to fold in your own but i'm using the same fabric like i cut it more like a bias so that i can use it to fold the neck of this dress you do the same to the other side of the back dress so guys after folding the neck you join it together and sew the zip allowance together i am sewing the both of them together like this so that when i am fixing my zipper it will be perfect as you can see the office pin is still attached to the fabric that is because i just want everything to be accurate and perfect and fine just sew it down to the half length now i want to gather the center you remember our dress if you check the waist region it's gathered you can either gather your own or you pleat it small small just to give this fine style and design on the dress so that is what i am doing here i am kind of gathering the back that's the waist of the back of the dress make sure you gather it to the waist measurement you understand what i mean by gathering to the waist measurement more like continue gathering it till you get your waist measurement divided by two and our waist measurement divided by two is 16 and a half inches here i am gathering the other side of the back of the upper back right here is the upper part of the dress the front part i just cut out a long mm, just measure it with your neck measurement that's more like eight eight by eight that should be 16 or it can be more than just place your tape around the already cut v-neck anything that it gives you you place it on your fabric and cut out something long so that you can use it to face the neck of your of the front part of the dress although you can still use a bias for it but i decided to face it with the same fabric so that is what i am doing here so guys after attaching the facing to the front neck you top stitch it so that it will lap well if you don't want to top stitch you can take it to your table and iron it properly so that it will lap well it won't be opening when you wear it the front upper front part of the dress just gather it small small gather it small small but just like gather it till you get to the you get to 16.5 inches that is the waist measurement divided by two yes either you gather or you pleat it small small but before gathering it you take it close to the down part of the dress that's the front one that place that you coughed remember we, we added extra three inches on top of the front down part of the dress because of the curvy style on this dress so you can decide to curve the upper part too maybe curve it in with like two inches before you start pleating so guys here remember what we started with when we wanted to sew we started with the wing design that is it here after hemming it or after folding you bring the front part of your dress that's the lower part place it on your table or anywhere then you bring that to your wing design and use office pin to like attach it exactly wherever you want it to be just use your pin to secure it first and arrange it properly before you take it to your sewing machine to stitch it together so while you are pinning it just be adding small small plates to it don't make the plate to be much just small small maybe you can be given like one inch gap your plate one inch gap are you seeing it we haven't even stitched the red ball it's giving us a lovely look okay guys so over to your sewing machine here i've already used chalk to like mark out remember the one extra one inch for sewing that we added just like sewing it together coupling the lower part of the dress that is the front and the back part of the dress including our wing design it's already there in the middle remember we used pin to secure it first before sewing here on the sewing machine so after so after joining the two sides together remember as you are sewing you are arranging at the same time so that you won't make mistake Make sure the other parts of the wing design is not obstructing or getting into your stitches. So guys, after coupling the down part of the dress, you keep that aside and go back to the upper part of the dress so that we can join our shoulder. Remember, this is a cut together dress. So the shoulder and the sleeve is already together. It's just to join the front part of the upper dress to the back part of the upper dress. That is what I am doing now. So here I'm trying to show you guys how you can join your dress your fabric how you can sew maybe if your sewing machine if your weaver machine is not close to you as you can see i am joining the front first after sewing on the front you now turn it 
turn it to the back side and then you sew again if you should sew it the second time your stitches will be very very neat so that is what i am doing here guys don't worry just watch and see what i mean after sewing it if you turn to the other side you will notice that there will be no need for weaving again why because you've sewn it in already so guys watch closely this is the back part of this dress so well as you can see it's very neat you won't be seeing the mouth of the fabric okay look at the front you see very neat the back too still very neat no need for weaving so guys just do the same thing to the other part to the other shoulder to the other side of the shoulder fold it and sew the front first so after joining the shoulders you fold your sleeve or hemming <clears throat> just make sure you do that neatly remember i added my one and a half inch that is what i am using here to fold the sleeve you don't need to rush it just be careful so that you get a good and the perfect finishing turn to the other sleeve and also fold neatly then couple it here i'm coupling the upper part of this dress more like joining the front to the back remember we've already joined the shoulder now this is the side remember that side that we slanted while we were covering the upper part of the dress this is it this is me sewing it yeah remember our one inch sewing allowance that is what i left that's what i'm using to sew it and we join it together after joining for the left you turn to the right and do the same do it neatly and sew it all the way down to the half length we are done coupling the upper part that's the front part of the the front part and the back part of the upper part of the dress we've coupled it already and we've already coupled for the down part of the dress the front and the back and the wing design so now it's time to join the upper part of this dress to the lower part of this dress and we'll be starting with the front one remember we've already gathered the waist region for the front and the back part so just mark out the center at the upper part of this dress and mark out the center at the down part of this dress too you can notch it so that you will know the center then you hold them together and sew I'm using half inch to sew here after joining for the front part that's the upper front part and the lower front part over to the back part so how we are going to do the back part is remember there will be a zipper at the back and we've already closed it so guys i will just like loosen it a bit and then i will join maybe the left the upper left and the lower left i will join them together then the upper right and the lower right i will also join them together after joining it together you close back what you opened what you are closing back is the zipper allowance why are you closing it back you close it back that's sewing it together again because we'll be using invisible zipper that's what i'll be using for the dress so so normally how i fix my invisible zip i kind of um, join the zipper allowance together first then i'll sew in the zipper before i loosen it again that is why it's called invisible zip so guys here i have already opened the zip allowance and i am sewing in my zipper yeah i'm doing it neatly so that i won't make mistake i'm always careful anytime i'm fixing my zip because i wouldn't want to like start all over again here i am stitching the other part of the zipper we are almost done guys this dress is actually easy to make i'm sewing it through down to the lower part of the dress remember when once you get down to that lower part you double stitch double stitch to avoid it loosening yeah more like tightening your stitch so guys here yeah, i'm already done fixing the zipper i am trimming out my rough threads yeah cutting them off trimming and getting ready to like fold the down part of the dress if you're confused or you have any question just type it on the comment section and i'm going to answer you or you check my profile for my whatsapp link you can send in your comments or your questions there and i'll answer you. yeah this is the dress on the body very fine very neat oh oh more this dress is really really giving <laughs> vibes, right? drop a lovely comment like and subscribe thank you on your notification bell because the next video is going to be lovely bye